Couldn't be a much Okay, better. here we go. All right, settle down. Good morning. We're here at the uh, Courthouse Square in the um, uh, Marion County Board of Commissioners weekly uh, board session. And it is Wednesday, February 10th, 2016. And we're going to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so I meant to say we're here in the Senate hearing room, which is uh, a great historical I place. You where you were. I, well, you guys were like confusing me from, uh, it's all my fault. where I was. I'm so. sorry. Um, it's good to be here. Always good to be here with you. And uh, I, get, I think we have nobody signed up for public comment this morning. So we'll go right into our consent calendar. And I believe Commissioner Carlson is going to talk about that. Yes, Mr. Chair, I will move today's consent calendar uh, under Board of Commissioners. We have one OLCC application that's recommended for approval. It's with SB Gas and Wash Management, Inc. in Salem 76 Circle K. Salem. Under business services, approve a recommendation to adjust salary ranges upward for the wastewater operator one, class code 398, and wastewater two, class code 399. I'm assuming that's wastewater operator two. Community services, approve an order appointing Jane Downing to the Marion County Children and Families Commission for a term ending January 31st, 2018. And that actually came out of the Alliance uh, report, so that's one of the recommendations we're Great. already doing. Approve amendment number one to the lease agreement with the Oregon Farm Bureau Federation adding $29,005.11 in funding for additional storage space to remove Marion County as a tenant and add the new tenant as Marion County Extension and 4-H Service District. Under finance, approve a quick claim deed to convey real property tax ID number R25901 and R25904. And that's it. I'll second the motion. Any uh, questions or discussion about anything? Uh, Just one, if, and only because it seemed like it. It seemed like this is more Marion County extension for that board. And little, and Janet, Commissioner Carlson, you, you'll know exactly why do we why do we deal out with with that here? I think it's because the uh, it used to be the county space, and now we're moving over to the district space. And so we approved it as the district first, and then it has to go to the county. Okay. So it's a relationship. That makes sense. The two the turn over. It's the county <coughs> official action turning it over to the 4-H extension district. Yeah, because okay. the extension service district was formed after we signed the original lease, so this amendment does, so does that. Yeah, you'll notice on the signature sheet we already signed it, and then we'll be signing it again That's today underneath okay, the board. Thank you. Great, so we have a, a motion to approve the consent calendar in a second, so all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so consent calendar's done, and our First action item this morning is um, approval of a proclam pro proclamation declaring February 16th as Government Day in Marion County. Although we, yeah, great. Commissioner. Uh, Chair Cameron, if I could, uh, I see my name on this, so the explanation I think is rather short. And we have a, a group coming in from the Chamber of Commerce, their Leadership Salem class on February 16th, and uh, as part of the Government Day session, the proclamation will be self-explanatory, uh, highlighting the, um, the importance, especially of local government. So I'd like to make a motion that we do approve that proclamation and then read it. All right, I will second the motion. Here we have a motion that's been seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Well, so we're the day that they're actually coming to Marion County is pretty soon, right? When is that? Next week. Next week. It's actually, right. I think, February 16th is the date that's on the proclamation. Great. Okay. And so I just wanted to add that that's always fun when they come here because we have a chance to let them know what we do as Marion County, which a lot of our leaders in the community are not real clear about what Marion County does. So it's just another opportunity to get the word out about the good work that we do here. Yeah, they'll, they'll be touring city government, county government. This will be the second year they're actually doing county government. And then I think they go to the state capitol, so they get a uh, broad spectrum that day. I took this class 
not last year, but the year before. Um, so I don't know what the graduating class would have been of 2014, I think it was. Great class, good exposure to a lot of things, including our burner and our solid waste management program. They get exposed to that as well. So, Yeah, they came here before two yeah. years ago, but it's been off and on. It's been kind of hit and miss. So I think it we came for a while, but, and then they quit coming, and then they kind of came and back. And we have attended presentations at the chamber over the years, too. Right. Good. So, or and I also I went over to Salem one time and presented when they were at Salem. So. Just been different so this years. year we'll have all the all the elected officials have responded to be there for that hour and a half um, and uh, so it'll be um, quite the um, quite exciting but also quite the challenge to keep us all under the time frame right so we have a motion I'm planning not on any, saying anything any <laughs> further discussion speaking of discussion uh, all those in favor of uh, uh, the proclamation signified by saying aye. 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 Okay, Commissioner, you want to start us off? Me? Or okay, fine. Yeah, okay. I okay. will let Sam start. Good. Okay. In the matter of proclaiming February 16, 2016, as Government Day in Marion County, a proclamation, this matter came before the Marion County Board of Commissioners at its regularly scheduled public meeting on February 10, 2016. Whereas leadership programs through the Salem Area Chamber of Commerce's charitable arm, the Inspire Foundation, provide individuals with opportunities to develop their leadership skill and connect with the community where they live, work, and play. And whereas Leadership Salem sponsored the Inspire Foundation, Salem Area Chamber of Commerce identifies, motivates, and educates potential community leaders and whereas through education and hands-on experiences, these individuals graduate with a better understanding of the, unique, of the unique challenges facing our region and can go on to create positive change that improves our quality of life and... Whereas through 10 full-day sessions, including history and culture, business and commerce, education, legal, government, natural resources, and community resources, participants receive a comprehensive overview of Salem and Marion counties complex issues and opportunities, and whereas by the end of the program, participants are prepared to take advantage of the opportunities for community involvement and leadership, and the community at large is benefited by well-informed and engaged residents, and... Whereas Leadership Salem is recognized by businesses, employers, and decision makers as an important program to prepare leaders to serve in our community, this one-year program allows individuals to develop and refine leadership skills and create long-lasting bonds with other up-and-coming leaders. Now, therefore, the Marion County Board of Commissioners declares February 16, 2016 as Government Day in Marion County and recognizes the positive impact of Leadership Salem and encourages members to participate in local government as a way to give back to their communities. Dated at Salem, Oregon, this 10th day of February, 2016. Very nicely written, by the way. That was a good yes. proclamation. Great. So we've already taken action, passed it, and read it. And uh, thank you, um, Raquel, for being here today as we read that and for helping organize the day as well. So, okay. And we'll move on. We're going to um, move into, we're going to open a, a session on the contract review board to do the next item. Uh, con consider a recommendation to deny Diamond Pharmacy Services protest letter regarding medical services requested for a proposal. And Camber and uh, Bruce are here um, to present to us. And somebody else is here today that I don't recognize. Good morning, commissioners and member of the board. My name is Camber Schlag. I'm the finance contracts and procurement manager. And I'm Justin Ford from the Marion County Sheriff's Office. Welcome, Justin. And Bruce Armstrong, Assistant Legal Counsel. So we are here today um, to talk to you about a, re a protest we received in regards to our request for proposal to, um, regarding medical services. The Marion County Sheriff's Office issued a multi-award RFP for inmate medical services on November 17, 2015. It closed on December 10, 2015. The medical services to the inmates um, I'm sorry. The purpose of the multi-award RFP was to obtain qualified firms to provide various medical services to the inmates at the Marion County Jail. Two proposals were received in response to the RFP and were found responsive, specifically the pharmaceutical services, correct, 
RX and Diamond Pharmacy Services were the two responses that we received. The Marion County Sheriff's Office issued a notice of intent to award letter on January 8, 2016 to the highest ranking proposer, Correct RX, based on the evaluation criteria within the RFP. On January 14, 2016, Diamond Pharmacy Services issued a protest letter to Justin Ford, contract specialist at the Marion County Sheriff's Office. A copy of the protest letter received by Diamond Pharmacy is attached to the packet. Uh, we then sought legal counsel to resolve the protest. The primary issue raised by Diamond Pharmacy Services in its protest letter is um, below, and I'll read it to you now. In accordance with section 4.2 of your RFP, we are submitting a protest on the grounds that the pricing submitted by CorrectRx on your list of 100 randomly selected medications which was utilized to score the cost proposal is erroneous and therefore would make their submission non-responsive and sub subsequently make correct RX ineligible for award. They also contained other um, comments within their letter. Um, so the, the county conducted its responsiveness review of the two pharmaceutical proposals. This review and determination was completed to ensure all RFP requirements, including minimum requirements, are met. Both proposals from the two pharmaceutical companies passed the responsiveness and responsibility determination and moved on to the evaluation scoring criteria. Uh, Marion County's practice is to hold proposals, proposers accountable for the terms stated in their proposals. The county maintains accountability by including pricing terms within the contract that is negotiated with a successful proposer. Any contractor that fails to comply with its contract terms will be held accountable to the county. Marion County Sheriff's Office staff has contacted CorrectRx and received confirmation that the pricing information included in CorrectRx's proposal was accurate and contained no errors. As part of the cost proposal review, the Marion County Sheriff's Office reviewed the credit policies of the two proposals received. The Marion County Contract Review Board may option one, deny the protest and direct award to correct RX. Option two, cancel the RFP and direct reissuance of a new RFP with revised cost proposal evaluation criteria. And option three, approve the protest and direct award to Diamond Pharmacy Services. So I have some questions. Are we done with your presentation? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Commissioner, go ahead. So I'm reading their letter, uh, the letter of protest. And so what I'm hearing you say is that you checked with them and they said there weren't any errors. Did you go back and actually ask them about the, so they say, uh, the national drug code number that they utilized for the line item? Did you verify that piece of it? The exact drug, it says, we strongly recommend as part of the pricing investigation that Marion County request the correct, of correct RX, the exact national drug code number they utilized for each line item along with their quoted source that they use for AWB pricing. Was that part of the investigation? Um, specifically, not that, but we requested that they confirm that their pricing was correct in their proposal. Right, well, it sounds like there's some more complex issues with this kind of apples and oranges, potentially. Um, and then it talks about in the third bullet, reimbursements of unused medications. So did you, did, was that something that they confirmed Yes, we receive reimbursements for unused medications. So the correct RX would do that? Correct. Okay. Um, in a bubble wrap situation? In a blister pack, correct. Okay. So that was resolved. And then the issue about upfront front end electronic ordering, requiring staff to conduct a paper MAR and medication pass. We do have an electronic uh, ordering system through the pharmaceutical. And it will work? Correct. With correct RX. So if the amounts are correct, but they're underneath the, what do they call it? The AWP, was that it? AAC. 
AAC, there they are. Is that a concern? I mean, are we going to be? Mr. Chair, Commissioner, uh, uh -huh. when we discussed this our, on an initial review, it was more of a, is it a feasible business or a, a challenge to the um, approach of CorrectRx, but it wouldn't affect our pricing, which was our focus on what Marion County would be charged. It's more of a, of a business practice issue. So it didn't seem to get at, it was at asking about what the wholesale price would be versus we're, we're paying retail. So we, what we are concerned about is what we are paying, not what their costs are to obtain the products. And so that seemed to be addressed at that issue. Well, I guess if I could just finish up, though, here. When I'm reading the letter, what they contend is that, and there was a, they quoted a comment that says what? In fact, most of the institutional pharmacies responding will have equal or similar buying power and the price per pill is relatively the same. So I guess that's, it's at the bottom of the first page of their letter and the top of the next page. So I just want to make sure that we're looking at the big picture, I guess. And I mean, so it seems to me that there are a couple options. I mean, one is that we could just deny the protest and move forward with the contract. In negotiating the contract, if they don't come through with the prices that they put in their RFP, then you're back at square one and you're going to have to go out for a bit again, right? Right. We would issue a notice to cure because their prices they included in their proposal will be part of the contract, so they're accountable that way. Right. And if their prices were undersold dramatically to get the contract and then that affects their bottom line and they can't do it, and six months from now they say, we can't do it, we want to up the prices on you, then what do you do? Then we would go back and consider canceling the contract and reissuing the RFP for those specific services. Right, because I guess what the concern is, I mean, it's kind of like a highway company that low bids it, and then they come in and the quality of workmanship isn't good, and you know, and you have all of these problems, and maybe you should have gone a little bit differently. And I don't know enough about pharmaceuticals to know uh, the ins and outs of this, but certainly the letter raises some interesting concerns. I mean, it's it's not just sort of your run of the mill. We're upset because we didn't get the right. contract, but raising some substantive issues that you wonder whether or not in our review process we actually understood it well enough to to make those judgments rather than just doing a well. Here's a price and here's a price and randomly looking at them side by side. So that's that's the concern that I had after reading the letter. Thank you. Any, I, I've got a couple. <coughs> well, just one. I'm explain, camera, if you could, or mm -hmm. someone. Is this is this get into the the difference in generic issues? Is there uh, Commissioner Carlson was talking about apples to apples? Are we talking the same drug, the same brand, et cetera? Or because you, you, there's a lot of differences there. I would actually have to defer to Justin because I I don't I don't know the answer to that. There were uh, several um, opportunities where they noticed. Uh, medications that were now being used generic if they recognize a generic as possible they will implement that so both uh, companies ended up changing that to a generic version and they noted that that they had they had priced it on the generic well, their considerations then were the same yes okay thank you so um, thank you uh, the, the uh, it seems like the concern in two of the bullets was that they're concerned that they may be selling uh, drugs to us below their cost. Do we care, Bruce? I think that's what I heard you just say. If they want to do that, there's, I mean, the business has the opportunity to do that. For, to, so in our contract, we would have those prices listed. We Correct, Mr. Chair. We would, as part of our contract, whenever we go through an RFP like this, we connect the pricing to the contract and we hold our contractors to that pricing and we we would if they we wouldn't pay for different pricing we would hold them to that to that i guess that your question gets to whether or not it's a viable um business operation and we haven't done a, a full-on credit check but i think justin said we have we have had i, I believe some experience with correct rx uh yes correct rx is our current provider and we've had them for I think the last 10 to 12 years. Okay. For multiple RFPs they've been awarded. 
And then the other uh, point that they brought up uh, was the credit policy could uh, make up to a 15% difference in our in our cost. Um, what, what's what are they saying there? What's the what's the difference in the credit policies? Did you see that? I think it was actually in our summary of what they said. Um, where did I read that? Great. Well, I saw that someplace here. Let me find it. And maybe it was about the return policy or something. Correct. I believe Diamond, I believe CorrectRx will reimburse over $2. Um, a, a pill that costs $2 or more, they will reimburse for that. Um, they will not reimburse for pills that are less than $2. The other fact that, or the other um, cost is that Diamond Pharmacy Services charges $2.84 per pill, which is an additional fee that Correct Rx does not have. A dispensing fee. A dispensing fee. Yeah. Per blister pack. I can't remember where I saw the 15%, but I did it's, see it in here. It's, it's the top of the third page. Yeah. On their on their letter, on Diamond's letter to us? Yes. It's the top of the third page. Is that where I saw it? Yeah. Yeah, we kindly ask that you compare our credit policies as credit will typically lower your invoiced cost per month by up to 15%. It's just... So we've validated that or looked at that, and that's not a concern. Correct. We receive okay. uh, we receive reimbursements back from Correct RX um, every month on our monthly invoices. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, John. Uh, Justin, is isn't Correct RX used by a lot of jails and counties, both here and and across the United States? Absolutely, they are definitely a big player in the uh, pharmaceutical inmate uh, corrections Correct. so they should know how to price their product absolutely okay okay and can I ask one more question yes. so it says in the letter that diamond was scored higher than all of the other it was but we in our packet we only have the final the, the composite is that so were, were there different categories where they were scoring higher and then they lost in price is that what happened I'm looking, there's a proposal evaluation summary, and actually, oh. the correct RX scores higher and ranks the first by all three of the members. So I was kind of confused about that statement in their letter. That document. I got cut off. There you go. Yes, um, that is correct. With the multiple categories were uh, uh, the overall proposal, the cost proposal structure, and references. And then those were broken down into subcategories um, according to their medical services plan, their physician medical group profile, uh, the project implementation plan, and then under cost, it was a cost plan and an overall cost, and then the references as well. So could, so were, who, who scored higher where, I guess, is my question. The, the is the letter correct that they scored better on everything except price? It came down to Do price. Do you have a summary page? Overall price due to the dispensing fee of $2.82 was going to be an increase. Uh, but overall, the uh, programs were fairly comparable. OK, so it's not a, you're not answering my question. So it says in the letter, we immediately requested the technical and cost proposals, which you graciously and expeditiously, expeditiously okay. provided. I was pleased to see that Diamond's technical proposal was scored higher than your awarded bidder's technical proposal by all three evaluators. That's the question, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to find out where, why they said that. So Diamond Pharmacy scored an 83, an 83, and an 88. Whereas Correct RX scored an 88, a 94, and a 96. So Correct RX actually scored higher in all three by all three committee members. Right, on the overall score. Mm -hmm. But that, what I'm asking is so were there subcategories? Because the overall score is a composite oh. that includes price. So what were the categories right. and where did they score higher? That's my this question. Okay. So. Where's diamonds at? Okay. 
So either it's true or it's not. I'm trying to find out if it's I know, true. Well, and I need to see. We don't have a giant summary. We ha just have sheets. There we go. Okay. So it looks like Diamond Pharmacy, under like physician medical group profile, they did score higher in one scenario. They scored a point higher. Um, in the medical services plan, they scored two points higher. In the project implementation plan, they were tied. And then when it got into the cost, that is where okay. they fell substantially. All right, that's where I wanted to know yeah. whether it was significantly higher and then the cost tipped it up, but it looked like it wasn't just all within, that much higher. Right, okay. just within a point or two. So that's when you were saying it was fairly comparable, but they yeah. did score higher. So yeah. it's true in their letter, but not that by that much higher. Correct. Right. Right. That helps, thank you. So is it my turn to make a motion? All right, I would move that the Contract Review Board deny Diamond Pharmacy Services protest letter regarding medical services request for proposal, which means that if we deny the request letter, then that means that you would move forward with the contract with Correct Rx. And I will have a comment after we get done. Okay. I'll second motion. that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion before we vote? Uh, yes, yeah, so I appreciate all of the information. This is a tough situation when you get a protest letter and I recognize that. I just want to make sure that what we've said on the record here is true, that if they will not hold to the price, correct RX, then we need to go back in fairness to the other bidder <coughs> and not just negotiate d a different price since that was the tipping point. So whether it's in the initial contract negotiation or we negotiate okay. the contract and then six months from now things go up, I mean, we need to make sure that we're looking at fairness. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So just to, uh, further, I, I guess should ask this question during the, the um, discussion, but I noticed the uh, quantities, are those monthly quantities that have been priced out? They were randomly selected off of just a, um, an invoice, correct? One invoice. So there's only about a $400, less than a $400 difference for a month. Correct. Okay. Okay, we're ready to vote. So all those in favor of uh, the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion passes to um, deny. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our business. We're gonna read the calendar for the next week. Hopefully it's not as long as last week's, but it, yeah, it's a little shorter than last week's calendar. That makes me feel better. So uh, later on today from 12 to uh, 1.30, and we're all um, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to go to SEDCOR and present the State of the County presentation at Broadway Commons on the second floor. That's noon to 1.30. Tomorrow, Thursday the 11th, from 7.30 to 9, Kaiser Marion County meeting at Sherry's Restaurant um, at 4998 River Road in Kaiser. Uh, also tomorrow from 10 to 11, the Statesman Journal will be at the editorial board located at 280 Church Street, Northeast Salem. Friday the 12th, Pay for Success Steering Committee. Um, did that get changed? It looks like it's here in uh, Commissioner's Boardroom from 1 to 4. That's correct. Okay, all right. And then on Monday the 15th, uh, the office will be closed for the President's holiday. The Monday um, the 15th says that Oregon Association of Oregon County Steering Committee and Board Meeting at the Local Government Center, um, still on the agenda. Uh, Tuesday the 16th, from 9.30 to 10.30, a work session for email retention in the Silverton Conference Room here uh, at Courthouse Square. Uh, Tuesday the 16th from 11 to 1, Leadership Salem class, Government Day, here in the Senate Hearing Room at Courthouse Square. Tuesday the 16th, again at 1.30 to 2.30, one-on-one -on -one department head elected officials meeting with um, finance, Jeff White, in the Silverton Conference Room here in the um, Courthouse Square. Wednesday, we will be back here in the Senate Hearing Room from 9 to on for the uh, weekly board session. Wednesday from 10 to 11.30, uh, Community Leader Roundtable with um, Congressman Kurt Schrader 
at the Chemeketa Center for Business and Industry at 626 High Street, room 102. Also Wednesday from 1 to 1.30, present service awards to IT, excuse me, IT department in the um, uh, HR training room on the fourth floor here at Courthouse Square. Wednesday the 17th from 4 to 6, um, Mid Willamette Homeless Task Force location at the Salem Public Library, Anderson Room, 585 Liberty Street, Salem. And Wednesday um, from 6 to 7 in the same, uh, well, Congressman Kurt Schrader's Town Hall at the Salem Public Library Locks Auditorium, 585 Liberty Street. Okay. So are we all ready for State of the County? As well, ready as we will ever be? Is that 10 minutes, 30 seconds, best I can do. Oh, you practiced. Yep. I didn't, I never practiced. So. I mean, about uh, <laughs> practicing all your life. <laughs> exactly. About eight minutes of it made sense. That's what troubles me. We have a little time to work on do it. Do we have a yellow card and a red card for time? Oh, I don't know that. No, we don't. So I'm going to have to, like, I'll start the put my watch up. Yeah. You start throw the, ice cubes? Is that the, the new the, technique? No, whatever time I have left, I'll make sure that I fit the conclusion really? into that time after the really? two of you get done. Yeah. So if I go a little long, you're just fine with I'm it. I'm fine. Really? Yeah, because I want to get to the questions and answers. See, we're more congenial now. That didn't used to be the issue. We couldn't dare go a few seconds over. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> for 10 minutes like I did. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you paid for that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I think I, I, I really appreciate the way you've, you've – uh, the direction you've moved, because I've watched over the years the state of the county address probably the last six years or so I've been going to those, um, and the direction you've moved, we've moved towards uh, engagement and getting people's uh, opinions and questions out um, kind of helps really set the tone for direction. So I really appreciate that. I'll probably kind of mention this again, but when, as I do this every year, we deal with so many and varied subjects, probably what makes the job interesting. But then to tell you you got 10 minutes to, to highlight or sum up all that important work in the past year and concerns for the year ahead, that in itself is a task. Maybe it's good that you make us do it so I focus for once. It's an interesting uh, process. How's your week been? Busy. We had a public safety council meeting last night. Uh, what else? Preparing for this homeless task force meeting. So, but it's all good. Um, probably been spending more time paying attention to what's going on at the Capitol than some of the projects that are sitting on my desk. Uh, although I met with Sarah yesterday on economic development and positions and where we're moving towards that. So there's some good things going on that you'll get a chance to get updated here at a management update. Um, what else did, did, did I go to last week? Well, we, we visited in the Capitol. You were there. I was there. You were busy uh, in another location. But um, interesting things going on there on minimum wage issues. Yeah, that issues. was the main subject, and it scares the devil out of me. Yeah, and, uh, um, you know, we need to probably – decide whether we want to send a letter from all three of us over there or not, but uh, that's one of them. Then the um, the the uh, renewable portfolio standard and getting the uh, renewable energy that we're producing in our burner into there, I, I don't know that whether, whether, I mean, there's some momentum, but I don't know if that's going to move forward. So what was the other one? There was uh, well, one oh, that on related that could hurt us would be uh, climate or carbon. Uh, and carbon. And somehow coming up with a fair portion of it where our burner generates so much and suddenly uh, we're left holding the bag for that. It's, it's untrue. In fact, in analysis, we're a net carbon improver, if that's right. English. Right. Uh, Compared to a landfill. Yeah. Right. And, but this bill would uh, yeah, bring not, us not recognize that. So we have to be watching that one. So, uh, and I, I want to, I don't know if Barb's watching, but Barb's been the one that's been kind of spinning around here for the last couple of weeks and just amazing how how when that building comes in to a short session how it just makes everybody just kind of like take 
energy towards it. So, okay, uh, state of the county. Yep. Anything we'll else? Be there. <laughs> Fine. We're ready to be done. We're adjourned. <laughs>